Next up, we have Kim Libreri. All right, I'll try and uh, be brief here. So I'm just going to go over some of the developments we've had at Epic um, in terms of digital humans um, and the five-year history that we've been messing around with them. Um, OK, I'm Kim. I'm CTO at Epic. Uh, I like to say creative technology officer because I get involved in a lot of creative projects as well as technology projects. I used to work in the film business for 20 odd years, made the move about seven years ago to uh, LucasArts, and then ended up at Epic. Uh, worked on a bunch of movies, including the Matrix movies, and uh, a bunch of other stuff on the slides. Um, at Epic, uh, you know, it was founded by Tim Sweeney uh, in 1991. Uh, Tim is still our CEO today. Uh, very, very strong background in technology and creativity. We make games, we make an engine, we use our engine to make games, and we work with our customers to improve the engine for their games, experiences, VR stuff, AR, pretty much everything. People design cars in Unreal Engine nowadays. Um, you know, one of the things that really does drive us is the pursuit of the perfect pixel. As we head to a world of the metaverse and large-scale virtual reality experiences, we want to make sure that we can produce convincing uh, images. And uh, um, digital humans is a pretty good way to, to go down that path. Um, you know, it's becoming pretty obvious that in the next 10 years, the virtual world and the real world are sort of merged into one, and uh, you won't really be able to tell the difference between one and the other, um, uh, except for what you get taught in the actual physical world. Um, Obviously, we need uh, plausible representations of ourselves in a photorealistic world. And uh, crossing the uncanny valley, as we call it, at least visually, um, is one of the biggest challenges in computer graphics. We've seen that the film industry struggle for years. The games industry is a really hard problem. Um, and what we're hoping to do is clear out that problem and leave it to the really hard problem of how you make artificial intelligence. Um, so it all started with a boy in his kite in 2015. Uh, we originally were going to do an open world demo where we can show that the engine allows you to fly over terrain and have loads of trees and procedural world crea creation. Uh, but we thought we wanted to tell a little bit of a story. So uh, my uh, partner in crime and epic, Gavin Moran, who's one of our animation directors, decided to write a little, little set of storyboards together uh, to make a story that uh, we presented at GDC. And uh, later, we went to SIGGRAPH, and it won uh, the best real-time graphics uh, at uh, RTL at SIGGRAPH. And it was also a nice palette cleanser compared to making Gears of War, which was about chainsaw toting space marines. So it was a nice, nice change. So here's a little bit of it. And the thing to remember as well is um, all them pixels were rendered in real time. Um, in the case of that movie, uh, we were generating at 24 frames a second. So I think it's 41, 42 milliseconds a frame to generate it. And uh, it taught us a lot of things. You know, Getting sort of animated feature quality characters is actually quite hard. And building the technology that you needed, not just to do the deformations on the body, but especially the face, was quite hard. And it led to the first collaboration for us and a company called Three Lateral out of Serbia that are known for making the best facial rigs in the games industry. Um, cut to one year later, we're getting very close to GDC. It was January, and I happened to be in the UK. And I met with my friends at Ninja Theory, and they said, guess what? We're making a digital human with Three Lateral. And we're using your engine, because that's what they use for their games. And wouldn't it be cool if we could do something that was a live performance? So in, uh, at, during GDC 2016, we took uh, the digital Senua and drove her by the actress, Melina is her name, um, live in front of the audience. And uh, you'll see little bits of it uh, in, this, uh, in this piece. We have three, uh, three lateral to thank for the faces, but Cubic Motion, who are a UK-based company, who are amazing at performance capture, were able to extract from just a, a couple of video cameras a live performance that, that we could translate into driving the rigs that were representing her face. Um, we also took it to SIGGRAPH and won again for uh, best real time in the show um, uh, during an actual sequence. We filmed a sequence sort of right in front of the audience. So here's a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel it. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Stop! And there you go. You can see that was Mel performing live. It was very nerve-wracking. It was an accent suit. If ever, if you've ever used them, they're amazing technology that they work at all. But they, you, you've got to a little bit, be, be a little bit careful with them. Very, very stressful. But it was awesome. And you know, we're a game engine. It's better for us to do live presentations than it is to do pre-recorded stuff. So, and we wanted to get people to start thinking about what does live performance mean for real-time interactive experiences? Could you have an actor or an actress drive a performance? A band perform in a concert? Um, I'm sure you heard about the marshmallow thing we did in Fortnite. So the, the potential's there, and uh, VR is actually a great way to experience this stuff. And that, that scene with Cinema also works in VR. So the next thing was in 2017, my friend Mike Seymour knocked on the door, said, hey, I've been scanned at ICT. How Lee runs ICT is in here somewhere nowadays. I think Paul was still there at the time he got scanned. Maybe I'm wrong. How will correct me later. Um, and he had a bunch of scans of his face in incredible detail, lots of different shapes. There you are. And uh, uh, down to the poor level of detail. So we're like, OK, let's see if we can push things even further than we'd done with, uh, with uh, Hellblade and the Senua character. Um, uh, we, uh, yet again, worked with three lateral and cubic motion to live, uh, produce a live experience. And uh, we had this interview process where Mike was able to run the, sit down in a chair, have his head-mounted camera on, and was able to uh, ask questions of uh, people that he was in interviewing at SIGGRAPH. And it was pretty funny and pretty awesome, and it absolutely pushed the envelope for us. Uh, better skin, better eyes, um, and the beginnings of thinking about how we would do hair for real-time games and for interactive experiences. Hi, I'm Mike. Well, kind of virtual Mike, really. This is our Digital Human Project, which is a collaboration of a whole lot of companies. Epic Games, Three Lateral, Cubic Motion, Tensun, uh, the Wiki Human Team, Sydney Uni, FX Guide, a whole bunch of people coming together to produce, well, a virtual human. And not only a virtual human, but one rendered in real time. Puppeteered or driven in real time, rendered in real time, and not only that, but at 90 frames a second in the stereo in VR. So in parallel with that project, um, our friends at Tencent had asked us, hey, we want to start showing that we can do some research. Would you collaborate on making a digital human that maybe they can use for live concerts or whatever things they choose for? So we're like, you know what? We want to go to the next level. So we found an actress, uh, Binji was her name, um, um, out of Shanghai. And we, you know, we had a scan through a super detailed process. I think we put her into the light stage again. The same team came together. We added Vicon. And the idea was to be able to show a full life performance with as close as we could get to a, a photorealistic human in the engine. She, the amount of detail is crazy. Refraction for the eyes, uh, even the peach fuzz. Every hair that represents the peach fuzz on her face is represented in the renders. We shot tons of ground tooth reference. And if you're really trying to make something super realistic, you have to shoot lots of reference. High dynamic range photography, lighting reference, the works to go down to the nth degree. Because it's, it's very, very hard to, it's easy to know something is wrong with a digital human. It's actually hard to work out exactly how to fix it. And without ground tooth reference, it's, it's just all hearsay. OK, here's the piece. Hello, I'm Siren, and I'm a digital human. I was created by an international team of artists and engineers who wanted to challenge our ideas of what a synthetic human could be. I've got state-of-the-art, real-time graphics and an unprecedented level of detail in my eyes, skin and hair. Cool, right? But I'm more than just a collection of fancy pixels. I'm actually being driven by a real human actress and her dynamic motion capture through Unreal Engine. Okay, so the next, I'll, I'm running out of time, I think, so I'm going to blast through this. Uh, next thing was a collaboration with our friend Andy. Um, for the first time, we actually did a 4D scan, which basically is not just a surface scanner, it's a surface for every single frame of performance. And uh, here's the result. Out. That's a, a new thing that Vlad was able Out. to give us. Brief candle. <laughs> Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. All right. Um, 
and you can see when you look at the side by side, so that creature is being driven by exactly the same animation data as the digital human. So what, as long as uh, uh, the rig is built the way that Vlad does in three lateral and you define each of the key components for the facial animation, it means that you can transmorph that performance onto a completely different uh, body and face. Um, uh, the last one that we're going to go over is this year's uh, thing. So we have ray tracing now, so we can ray trace. Who would have thought it would have been possible, but we can ray trace at uh, 24, 30, 60 frames a second. And uh, we did a collaboration with our friends at Goodbye Kansas and Alicia Vikander to bring together this piece, Troll. Um, area lights, textured area lights, all the fancy tricks that we'd use in a movie five, six years ago, all running in real time. That's it, pretty much for that. The next big thing for us is now three lateral a part of Epic. We're going to work on how do we make it so that digital human faces are easy for everybody to make. And massive amount of effort goes into these. And you'll, you'll see from our friends on the next presentation that it's actually really, really hard. So we want to make it that for um, uh, normal game creators or normal people making um, uh, interactive experiences, we take the mystery out of it. So that's our big project for the next couple of years. Um, uh, also, Cubic Motion are working on improving the quality of facial capture. It's one of the big unsolved problems. I, we've actually seen some pretty good work from Digital Domain this year. And, uh, um, but it's still, we still have this question. Can we, we can cross the Uncanny Valley as pixels, but can we cross them as a plausible being? And I'm hoping on the rest of these uh, presentations we have today, we hear if that's possible or not, and when will it happen. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.